this guy pops out of nowhere, surprisingly. We got this crazy story he was just telling me about. I guess this guy came out and rode in one of these cars and then has a door and is uh, handicapped yeah, yeah, yeah. racing. And then he was also, I, I have to say that he said that y'all have racing here almost every day of the week. You yeah. got rally cross that jumps on the dirt track, comes yeah. through here. Yeah, we've got uh, like a... Uh, um like we have a like autocross on the on the dirt track, and then um, then we have um, like a rally sprints that run a uh, like tarmac rally. So they run right around the whole venue. So and they're, they're free drags on the Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So drag racing. We'll pass Wednesday tonight. There'll be burnouts. Burnouts happening soon. Yeah. So what does that even mean? <laughs> You'll go and have a look. You'll have a look. Oh, no, speedway yeah, stops. Yeah. You walk over there and have a look. Oh, You'll see no. guys just fogging up with their cars and just cutting sick. So uh, yeah. So yeah, pretty uh, pretty impressive. Um, yeah, facility, and we've got to, you got to keep it moving, you've got to keep, uh, right. got to keep Doesn't stuff happening all the time. The show. Yeah. Well, that's true, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. That, that's just insane that you are able to do so much. Yeah, yeah, you just have to, you just got to keep it, keep it, um, keep ticking over, you know, so that's the important thing, so. Right. Uh, yeah. so and then when you have the, the fantasy land of racing facilities, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You got you got to turn the key and throw the throttle down. You know, absolutely. I mean, look at that. That's what we're proud of, and the racing part of it. You know, this sort of stuff that we're doing, and we do this uh, always be, uh, prior to Wednesday night. So on Wednesday night, prior to a race meeting, we always have testing, and I think we've got 50 cars here tonight, so it's pretty good. You know, from our perspective, it, it keep, gives the, the, um, the competitors, um, you know, testing opportunities. Um, you know, they can cut cut some laps on the racetrack and then go home, and then they'll be ready to go for for Saturday. And some classes that aren't racing this weekend are testing. They might be racing in the bush somewhere. Where, right, like uh, the late models ain't going to be here until yeah, so uh, another they're week, almost. Another week away. So, yeah, so they'll just um, do their testing and, and then um, they come and have a play and then go and race when, in, next, in a couple of weeks. I just, I mean, I love it. I pinch myself. You know, I raced for a long time myself, and and um, this is my, I think, my twenty first year as the promoter, and and I, um, I, I just, I, don't, I haven't gone to work a day in my life, quite frankly. I just come here and get to talk racing all day and um, and uh, and enjoy myself. So we've got great people around us, and yes, it has its challenges, but at the end of the day, it's just great fun. And we uh, we like to put on a good show, and we've got an amazing facility that we want to showcase to not only Australia but to the world. And um, and, and and it's it's just amazing. It's just absolutely great. I was joking earlier tonight. We just need to get rid of all divisions of motorsports and just do drag racing and dirt oval. Yeah. That's it. No it's, Formula One. No NASCAR. Yeah, 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 yeah. V8 supercar. Just get rid of them. Get throw rally cross in there. I like that too. Yeah, yeah but it, you know, like it's um, it, it's sort of one of those things. You know, you've got to you know people have all different motorsport genres that they follow and you think about motorsports probably one of the biggest sports in the world on the planet because there's so many people doing it and even if it's a, a little minion type little class there's lots it doesn't matter whether it's motorboats or you know jet jet boats or uh, you know tractor pulls or you know sprint car racing speed car racing late rally models, cross, you know, rally drag cross racing, yeah, yeah drag racing burnouts in a minute you know so um yeah, plenty of plenty of scope. So the problem is with our, all our sports is we're not necessarily united, and you know, late model guys might not like sprint car guys and that sort of stuff. But generally in Australia, we're pretty uh, pretty united. You know, they, they they still have their favourites, and that's okay. That's what makes the world go around. You yeah. Know? Well, and you put them all on the same night anyway, so absolutely pick your poison and like both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I think that's really important. I mean, I think our shows are, you know, what I've learned travelling, you know the US and traveling around Australia and stuff like that we, we sort of you know many years ago we sort of picked our poison if you like and we said righto um, we get, we, we'll run with sprint cars late models and speed cars they're our stables and former which is midgets yeah they're midgets no disrespect yeah, just, yeah, well, but, I'm just but, saying for but, the relating well, well, worldwide they should be called speed cars and then they'd be on it the it sounds way better the, absolutely I'm sure Rico's disrespected half the time <laughs> yeah, but continue perhaps, perhaps you know but I, I think um, you know our former 500s which are like micros and stuff like that they're really really strong as well and they're a great class here um, and, and then the wingless sprints as, as well and then they're different to the obviously US ones no V8s but, it, but it's okay for mine because they've got a V8 class you've got sprint cars so right. know, like, and so that's cor- more so a budget class yeah 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 yeah. so and, and their, their quality and their racing is good so I mean we'll run them I think on Wednesday night that next Wednesday we're on the uh, midweek mayhem race so we'll uh, that'll be a pretty cool thing and so you travel the world and this is what you think you, yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. when I mean, you the- were coming to apply it to this facility that you're leasing it's, it's a government owned 
own facility yes. and you lease, yeah. correct? Well, I, I work for the company that that, that, that leases has the lease. it. So yes. you're in a lot of you, you're in the hot seat. You're yes. in the quarterback position of Absolutely. throwing the right balls here. Yes. So you had to know what you know what routes to run. Absolutely. Look, I, I got a, I got a great teacher. My dad, um, you know, he he promoted Claremont Speedway. You know, you you might walk around in Perth and people will talk to a little bit about Claremont Speedway and. It was, uh, you know, 73 years old when it when it died in the end because the the, the, the landlord didn't want it there anymore, and and that was right smack bang in the middle of the city, you know, and um and the, but the government and my dad's relationship with the government at the time, um, he wanted to um, see this venue, uh, they built a new venue, so the relationship was to get this venue built, so 22 million dollars back on um, in 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 2000. Is, um, is is just an amazing investment. So from um, you know we, we, we got that, and my dad like he promoted you know huge events through through his 32 year um, uh, promoting career. I remember sitting in in um, in Des Moines, in Iowa, um, at a motel uh, across the road from uh, Bob Trosser's workshop, and Bob Trosser and my dad were sitting on motel bed um, doing a deal to come to Australia. And the next year we had. You know, Tim Green and Rick Unger and you know and uh, Mike Brooks and and stuff like that. Those guys here and Jack Hewitt over the time and Jack Hoddenschild. So you know we've had some you know Mike Sweeney. We've had some amazing guys that my dad brought to Australia through that time and 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 you know all come to fruition this year for us. You know just to build build Speed Week again and um, obviously this year to have Brad Swede and Rico and. And um, you know uh, Brock Zierfoss and um, you know and Corey Lyson and and plus our good good Western Australian guys and you know so you know we we, we um, very passionate about it want to see Speedway grow um, dirt track racing grow um, and I think we've made the right choice by picking you know your big three which is your sprint cars your late models and speed cars because they're they're worldwide classes instantly recognisable we've got great talent got great investment and if you provide racing opportunities it'll encourage investment so it's very simple right you you know, they say Melbourne's like a sports capital for Australia. The big five go there, they say. Yep. It's almost like this is kind of like that for the dirt world it should be at least. Yeah. Uh, will you see something big come over here? You know, rumors of high limit and stuff trying to come here now. Yeah. Because Brad, Sw- Brad was here. I mean, why yeah. wouldn't it? If I'm Brad Sweet, I want to come here too. Absolutely. Is the, are, are these possibilities? or? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've um, we've had some conversation, so we'll uh, we, we do a little bit of homework now and see if we can, um, what, you know, what we can do to Towards um, you know showcasing an international event, um, you know I think this that it's what it's what we need to do. I think it's the sport needs to do it in, in Western Australia, and you know if we can get the support to make it happen, because it's obviously a huge investment. If we can get the support to make it happen, then um, then why not? You know I'm a, I'm a dreamer, and uh, and I think uh, if you don't if you stop dreaming, you, uh, you you shouldn't be in the promotional game. You know so. Um, you well, know. And I'm sure you met Brad. I, I yeah. said it from day one. The outlaws are underestimating the guy because he's one of the hardest workhorses there are out there. Yeah. He's very smart and intelligent and thinks about doing stuff that people ain't doing. And yeah. Yeah. if that was to happen, I'm sure I'm sure you got that same sense, and that seems like what you're kind of doing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah look, it, it, it is. I mean, you know, I think those guys are doing a good job, and, and you know, hopefully, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, World of Outlaws has been a great stable for for uh, for world of sprint car racing. Um, you know, but I mean, things change. I mean, we've probably seen series come and go, but you know, this one seems to be fairly strong with the, the high limit seats. So yeah, it'll be. And uh, there's room for both. You know, there's yeah, room for yeah. Both. Like I think what 330 odd million people in the US. I don't think really. I don't think it's really going to be that big a deal. Right. Um, and I think the cool thing is, is that there's, there's. I think. More sprint car racers are going to be making a living out of it, and right. that's, that cannot be a bad thing. And you know, we're still very much a hobby over here. Um, but you know, wouldn't it be cool in a in a few do- a few years' time that we can sort of be paying some really good racers? Right. That, and then uh, you got the seven plus doing what they're doing yeah. slowly enough, and the action on the tracks really good when you yeah. compare it to in the states NASCAR. Yeah, the, the action's so much better. Or over here, the V8 supercars. Yeah. Yep. The action's just it, 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 the visual entertainment. I said this to Brian Carter last year at Pollution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The visual entertainment that sprint car dirt racing can provide is second to none when it comes to motorsports. Hundred percent. I think I think one of the biggest challenges with sprint cars is is that actually it's relatively easy to do. You know, you can you can have um, uh, 
know, there's, there's so many race teams that's accessible, you know, to, to be able to race. Um, I think with NASCAR, it's sort of fairly limited, like Formula One's limited, V8 supercars are limited. The price to play is yeah, killing it. Yeah, but, but I mean, you, the argument is, is it killing it? I'm not sure. It's exclusive. It's no different from NFL. You know, like, can you get into it? Probably not. But if you've got more money than God, then perhaps you can get into it. Right. You know well, more money than God's very rare. Yeah, it is. World. It is. It is. So, um, you know, so so those sorts of things are, um, you know, uh, you know, it, it's important that, you know, motorsport costs money. And as the old adage said, speed costs money. How fast do you want to go? So those things are, uh, you know, they're, they're, it, it's important to um, keep your investment going. And if we keep putting big races on, more car owners get involved, more young guys get opportunities to race. You know, we've got a lot of real good young talent here in Western Australia. And, um, you know, and there's a lot of talent in, in Australia. And, and um, you know, we've got some great young guys coming here this weekend. You know, and obviously Lockie McHugh, huge talent. Jock Goodyear, huge talent. Um, you know, I'm really hoping that our guys, uh, you know, obviously being parochial Western Australian, I really hope our guys can um, to do a good job and, um, and, 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 and and hopefully have a victory. Right, and you got the midget title coming up in a few weeks. Yeah. I hear the Americans can come over and race that yes. too. Yep, yep. And, and, and funny with your point about teams and stuff, you know, the more this sport gets exposed, the more a guy who has some money would be like, hey, I don't want to have a yacht. Correct. I want to have a race team. Who's yeah. a good driver? And then somebody like a Jordan Charge or somebody yeah. who may not have the financial ability to go to 410 or yeah. or go to a big-time racing, that guy can see him and be like, all right, I'll recruit. And that's how it's technically supposed to work. 100%. You know, drivers are supposed to be rewarded based on what they do on the racetrack, kind of yeah. like Callum. Yes. He, he caught the attention from performing on the track yeah. and getting rewarded for it. Whereas motorsports in the last 10 or 20 years has kind of been pay to play yeah, to yeah, advance. Yeah, yeah. And, and the way to get away from that is, I think, dirt racing. It's the only sport yeah. where you can legitimately attract the affordability 100%. department to yeah. advance guys into the sport in the top echelons of it. Yeah. And the thing is, too, if you're no good, you get exposed. Right. It's, it's real simple. You it's can't come out simple. here and ride around. You know, if you're not good enough, you, 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 you'll you lose your ride. And it's that simple. And if you're good enough, there's a pathway for you. And, um, you know, and that, that's what I love about dirt track racing. You know, you know, the American dirt late model scene is just Unbelievable. Amazing. Unreal. Um, the, you know, the, the midget scene is, is amazing. Um, I wouldn't agree, but, you know, but, but it, it's just, it's, it, they've got so many young kids and that's cool and might sound a bit stupid or, you know, but I, I, I think they're sort of because it's sexy people want to be a part of it you know what i mean so you know like it's 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 cool looking i mean sprint car racing is is is, is amazing and look at the, i mean the presentation here you know yeah. you, you'll see even on the weekend you'll just see the transporters and the way we allocate the pits i'm sure you're going to be pretty impressed i mean um we we're really making this event like a show and um you know this whole area this whole area we've actually kept it clear there'll be a big screen in the middle here so the race teams will all be pitting out but they'll be able to watch the racing from the back of their trucks right um so you know well, um, when you do it with with a lot of class a lot of pageantry yeah. and that's the type of presentation that's going to attract those big car owners or new car owners to the sport Absolutely. you know it's a it's, a, it's y'all how y'all do it? it's a very smart economical way of doing it yeah. rather than just trying to attract a few big sponsors on a car and do a series and rent some tracks yeah you're actually trying to promote and grow. Yeah, yeah. And, so, um, you know, we've got great sponsorship support. We've got some great, um, you know, people that are, um, you know, very successful businessmen that, that get behind us because they like what we do. Right. Um, but they're, they're Your performance on the track of promoting, 100%. And, and, and that support, to me, is probably more important. Friendship, more important, because you they're on the journey with us you know right. like we're, we're just we're, look we're the current custodians of, of of our sport we're the current custodians of this beautiful venue um and we have we're responsible so right. if you if you do the right thing if you build it the people will come you know what i mean it's that simple well and racing's a lot about relationships yep. you know and when you love it in a loving way and your relationships are built on love more than financial gain like yeah. back, not to real comparisons no, 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 no. but people appreciate that and you have better relationships that last longer and grow grow higher than the other way of, of route of doing it yeah, you, know, so. it me, you know like it's like it's my job but you know I, I, I said to my wife I said I probably should have sold cars or sold houses or something like that I reckon I would have made more money but I, but I would have had much fun no no I'm not um, you know I'm, I'm truly blessed like to, to you know the gift that my father gave me from a, a passion being a passionate person and I'll, and I'll introduce you to him on the weekend. He's uh, just turned 82, and he, he is the most passionate speedway person on the planet. And um, you know, I've just got a little bit of that for, for, with from him. And um, you know, and 
to, we've got a great young team, my track curator's not even 30, my, you know, my, my team, my, we've got a lot of mature people, um, but we've got, um, you know, our, our young people as well, and, and that future-proofs the sport. So you've got to be, you've got to future-proof what we do, you know, like we've just got that tractor there, cleaning up the dirt, and, um, you know, those little things that we do, we, we want to make sure that our venue's pristine, so you can walk around in your nice clothes, and you can look the part, and right. if you want to go out nightclub and afterwards, you can. Yeah, you're not you, you got, this shit. is definitely the, the <laughs> where dirt needs to be, class yeah. it up a little bit. Yeah. You know, I was joking at the Americans about it, but... That, yeah. That's the aspiration that you should be trying to do. Hundred percent. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, yeah, I think we're, um, I think we're heading in the right direction. We, we've, it's been a long process. The venue's twenty four years old, twenty four seasons old this year. Next year's our twenty fifth birthday. So, you know, there's some pretty cool stuff that we, we are certainly going to plan for. You know, um, and um, you know, we're we're, uh, we're we're passionate about what we do and. And, 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 and hopefully uh, you know take the take the fans and the race teams and the and the teams on the journey because I think like I said current custodians we have a responsibility how you not only um, hold the venue but also where you're taking it and and hopefully you know that's that's really your legacy on how, how you leave stuff you know, so on your 25th anniversary next year you're not going to be upset if I bring anybody but Larson signs to the track. pretty much pretty much so he's he's the one I mean there's no pressure but we, we need to get Larson in don't we? We, look, I mean it's just wonderful I mean Obviously, that tweet that he did the other day and said he needed to uh, come here, and we, you know, we naturally want to make that happen. And you know, I think it's um, it, it, it'd be great for Australian motorsport, but particularly for Perth. I mean, we are you know we're the most remote capital city speedway track on the planet. Um, you know, the furthest part of the world. You flew here, you know how far it is, right? Um, you know, and and it's we're really proud to have that. And and you know, we've we've made some wonderful friendships over the years. I mean, I, you know, Kenny Jacobs is just a, a just a beautiful person, a beautiful family. And and Kenny Jacobs, uh, he regularly used to say, he said, oh, when I went to Australia, I never got treated better. You know, what right. I mean? and, and that's what we're proud of because and that's Western Australian hospitality. You know, so uh, we've got a lot of good people, a lot of people that that prepared to help, and um, that's uh, that that all keep growing our sport into well into the future. This is how we ride, this is how we do.